Hey! Is Charles cheating on Louise? What secrets is he keeping? Hey everybody, welcome to the G. Louise book series. Please give the old thumbs up. We're doing uh, Nora Roberts, J.D. Robb, Strangers in Death with my pal here. Be prepared for some spoilers. So, Eve Dallas is a lieutenant in the New York City Police and Security Department. She 100% believes her entire identity is as a cop. Although it's been a few years now, and she's sort of getting used to being Rourke's wife, but um, we really don't have any... Uh, there's no really no bad dreams in this one, which is good. Um, there's no uh, social situations, sort of, kind of, which is good. Because Eve, Eve is raised in the foster system, and she's just not used to social system, but she is learning. But um, we get a visit from an old friend. Well, first of all, uh, a rich, what does a millionaire, Thomas A. Anders, death have in common with Simon Custer? a low poverty level guy who's cheating on his wife with Elsie. But I have to, uh, we have Thomas A. Andrews, a very rich guy who's gotten murdered and his wife is out of town. And Eve is so positive that the wife did it, but she can't prove it. The wife was out of town. She's got alibis. She's been documented. Eve starts in interviewing her circle of friends. And Baxter has a problem with a case that's a couple of months old and he can't get on, he's been asking Eve for help, but she's been working on her case, so she has another time. But we get a visit from an old friend and it's just, it's one of my favorite peeps. So, um, well, first of all, the, uh, the murder guy works in Rourke's building. Um, it was interesting, but not surprising, that Anders' worldwide New York headquarters was housed in the sleek black tower on 5th. Rourke Enterprises' New York headquarters also housed its base there and owned every inch of the sleek black tower. Do you want to stop by and see? Peabody asked. Eve goes, no. Peabody rolls her eyes at Eve's back as they step into the huge glass lobby with its rivers of flowers, its moving maps, its busy shops. I just figured since we're here, we are right here, Peabody. And if you roll your eyes behind me again, I'm going to poke them out with a stick. You don't have a stick. There's a tree right over there. I'll get one. But anyway, to our friend here because there's so many cute moments with Bella and Mavis um but I will start I mean I could sit here and read you the whole book um but I do want to start with a really good friend of ours um <sighs> ye lady yo lady it took her a minute but she made the voice and the small package it came from Coffee black skin, vivid green eyes, and a curly high top of hair. The boy hauled the same battered suitcase, approximately the size of Staten Island. He hauled in December when he'd been hustling the fake cashmere scarves inside in it near the plated body of a jumper on Broadway. Didn't I tell you I'm not a lady? I'm a lady, right, Casanova? Right? He's a good boy. Yes, you are. You're a cop. I tracked you down, and I've been waiting here, and these other cops tried hassling me about why I wasn't in school and shit. Why aren't you school and that shit? Because I got business. He shot a finger at her. With you. I'm not buying anything. I got a tip. Yeah, I got one too. Don't bite off more than you can chew. Why not? You can't chew it. You spit it out anyway. 
That was stupid, Eve noted. Okay, what's your tip? I'll tell you, but I'm pretty thirsty. He gave her the same grin he'd flashed the previous December. Do I look like a mark, shorty? You look like the top bitch cop in New York City. That's a word on the street. Yeah, maybe she could spare a minute and the price of a Pepsi. That is the correct word. Give me the tip, and if I like it, I'll pop for a drink. I know where there's suspicious activity and suspicious characters. I'm going to take you. Kid, you're hard-pressed to find anywhere in the city where there aren't suspicious activities and suspicious characters. He shook his head in disgust. You a cop or what? We established that. I've got work to do. Same guy, same place, same times, every day for five weeks. I've seen it. Maybe they see me too, but they don't mind me because I be a kid. No, Eve thought. Not stupid. Most people didn't see kids. What does this guy, same guy, do at the same place at the same time every day for five weeks that makes him a suspicious character involved in suspicious activity? He goes in with an old shopping bag heavy the way he carries it, and a couple of minutes later, bop, he comes out again, and he's got a different bag, and it ain't heavy either. The kid adjusted the airboard slung at his back. Where is this din of inequity? The kid's brow furrowed like an elderly grandfather's. Ain't no den. It's a store. I gotta take you. It's a good tip. I ought to get an orange fizzy. You ought to get a kick in the ass. But she pulled out credits, passed them over, jerked a knob at vending. While he plugged in the credits, she considered. The kid was sharp enough and had probably seen just what he said, meaning the store was a front or a beard for passing off wallets, bags, and whatever else the street thief could lift from Taurus, and New Yorkers foolish enough to get their pockets picked. The kid sucked on the fizzy. We gonna get so you can catch them? Give me the location, kid, and I'll send the cops. Uh-uh. I gotta show you. That's the deal. What deal? I didn't make any damn deal. I don't have time to go driving around and wait for some pickpocket to make his big bag drop. The boy's eyes were like glass and just as sharp. I guess you don't be much of a cop. She could she could have stared him down. He was pretty sure of it, but he made her shoulder blades itch. You're a pain in the ass. She checked the time, calculated odds where the drop spot was in Times Square, where she had the misfortune of meeting the kid in the first place. She could swing by there on the way home. Maybe she'd get some damn work done at home without being interrupted every five minutes. Wait here. If you're not here when I get back, I'll hunt you down like a dog and stuff you inside the suitcase. Dig? I gonna show you? Yeah, you're gonna show me. Stay. Peabody, I have to make a run, semi-personal, then I'm going to work at home. But, 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 I have 75 in like any minute. Do that. Copy any new data, shoot it to my home office. But, you're not going to go with me? Pull yourself together, Peabody. Eve grabbed file docs, tossed them in her bag. You've done on air before. Not like this, Dallas. you got to go with me. I can't go there by myself. I'll... Jesus, how can people be worth all this? Take McNabb. Tell his DS I cleared it. Eve dragged on her coat. And don't fuck up. <laughs> so. You want to see Peabody's first on air with Nadine. Do you want to find out what Charles Monroe's secret is? Do you want to know if it's going to break up him and Louise or make them stronger? Do you want to know if Eve is successful in helping Tico? And do you want to find out what a rich guy's murder and a low-level Simon Custer's murder has, am I boring you, <laughs> has to do or has in common and what Baxter's case might have in common, I will give you one little clue. I will give you one little clue to murder Agatha Christie. What do you think, Casanova? 
Strangers in Death, J.D. Rahab, Book 26, Steve Dallas, Ketchup on Nadine, Mavis, Bella, Baxter, Chewhart, Whitney, Charles and Louise, and some other friends, and see how Eve spells it out, fixed, discovers the truth behind the murders, and how work helps her. Please check it out and please give me the thumbs up. I'm just trying to read books here and give reviews and talk about them. I need all your support out there. Everybody give me your support, please. Thank you. And my pal here. I wish I could make little bubbles for his thoughts, but I don't have that talent. I don't have that equipment. So please give the old like and subscribes. He's going to fall asleep now because I've been boring him to death. I hope I haven't bored you. I hope it's been interesting. I guess I Christmas. Strangers on a death. Have a good one.